So this is a very important thing to contrast that fructose in isolation does not perform equivalently to fructose in fruit when we look at research studies. Yet nutritional reductionism is alive and well, and so often fruit is vilified because it contains fructose, but in many studies, uh, fruit has a very positive effect on the endothelium, on the nitric oxide system, et cetera, et cetera. So let's start with a study by Robert Lustig, which is often cited as one of the dangerous indications for fructose. And I think this is a very interesting study to consider, but um, again, we will specify that this it definitely is fructose in isolation. So for those of you who are watching, I'll do a screen share. For those who are not, I will read the titles of these studies. And if you would like, you can go to YouTube and see the actual illustrations or the studies in video, but otherwise you can look them up on your own. This is a study which um, effects of dietary fructose restriction on liver fat, de novo lipogenesis, and insulin kinetics in children with obesity. Again, Robert Lustig is one of the authors and perhaps one of the most well-known popularizers of this concept. This is an interesting study. It says compared with baseline on day 10, liver fat decreased from a median of 7.2% to 3.8%. Great. The um, de novo lipogenesis, the DNL area under the curve decreased from 68% to 26%. De novo lipogenesis is the biochemical process in the liver by which fructose is made into fat. So that is not a good thing. Generally, it happens at a very, very low rate in humans. Uh, and again, this is not the DNL rate. It is just the DNL, the de novo lipogenesis area under the curve. And the insulin kinetics improved. Um, these changes occurred irrespective of baseline liver fats. So the conclusions are short-term, nine days, isocaloric. So same calories, no calorie restriction here. Fructose, fructose restriction, decreased liver fat, good thing. Visceral adipose tissue, good thing. And de novo lipogenesis, all good things. And improved insulin kinetics in children with obesity, these findings support efforts to reduce surrogate consumption. So this is a very striking study. And if you look here, I perhaps should have given a little bit more detail. There were 41 children in the study, ages nine to 18 years old, all had meals provided for nine days. So they had essentially significantly decreased levels of processed sugar in the diet, sugar sweetened beverages, et cetera, which was the main intervention here. All of their meals got provided and they had significantly improved outcomes. Now, there are some in the space who would say that pure fructose, sugar, table sugar is not bad for humans. But studies like this make me think, okay, here we're taking 41 children ages nine to 18 and we are decreasing their consumption of these sugar-sweetened beverages. It could be something else in the sugar-sweetened beverages, but I'm pretty sure the table sugar, which is glucose and fructose, it is a sucrose is glucose and fructose, it's a disaccharide. So it's about 50% fructose is a problem for humans. But studies like this are what get highlighted when people say fruit is bad, because we know, in quotations, we know that fructose is bad for humans. And the rest of the studies are left out, which may show that fruit or fruit containing fructose, fructose present in a food matrix, actually has a different effect in human physiology. So for instance, this is an interesting study um, that I will share. The title of this one is Orange Juice or Fructose Intake Does Not Induce Oxidative or Inflammatory Response. I focus on the orange juice. I find it interesting that fructose intake did not induce oxidative uh, response in this one. I would not recommend fructose intake, but they compared it. Four groups, eight subjects each, normal weight, were given a 300 calorie drink of glucose, 75 grams, fructose, 75 grams, or orange juice, or water sweetened with saccharin, a control group to drink, and then blood samples were taken. Um, they found that caloric intake in the form of orange juice or fructose, fructo fructose does not induce either oxidative or inflammatory stress, possibly due to its flavonoids content and might therefore represent a potentially safe energy source. What they don't say in the conclusion, but you can read here in the results, is that the glucose, which is a molecule that very rarely gets vilified, the glucose sweetened beverage actually did induce oxidative stress and an inflammatory response. So what they say here is that there was a significant increase in reactive oxygen species generated by mononuclear cells, poly poly polymorphonuclear cells, and in NF-kappa B binding in mononuclear cells over baseline two hours uh, after glucose intake. These changes were absent following fructose, orange juice, or water intake. There was significantly lower reactive oxygen species generation and NF-kappa B binding following orange juice, fructose, and water compared with glucose. So that's interesting to me. Orange juice, pretty darn safe in that study. 
and glucose doesn't look very good. Well, nobody is really vilifying glucose because glucose is in everything. You're going to get glucose if you're getting any sort of starch in your sweet potato, any sort of starch in your white potato. Again, people ask me this all the time. I'm more a fan of sweet potatoes than white potatoes, but I'm not generally a fan of any of the roots. Even sweet potatoes have defense chemicals, ipomia marone being one of them. I don't know if I've ever talked about that on the podcast specifically, but I can talk about it in the future. Maybe I'll throw in a little nod to that at the end of this one, but even sweet potatoes have defense chemicals that can bother some people. Remember the framework for which I uh, that I use to think about this dietary approach or all dietary, approach, dietary approaches is if you are thriving, do not change a thing about your diet. But if you are not thriving, it is a good thing to question your assumptions and to consider the fact that many of these plant chemicals may be harming humans. This is kind of the, the basics, the underlying nuanced message that I'm trying to get across to people. 